a voice cries. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Roads are an important part of Christmas. Particularly this year, after the past few months, many of us will be on the highways using the roads. Because where you are matters. Being with the ones you love, spending time with family and friends. It's one of the things we enjoy so much about this time of year. The first Christmas was also all about a road. In fact, it was a highway building event. Christmas is all about God coming to earth, God building a highway to us. In the same way that our love for people might put us on the road at this time of year, so God's love for humanity builds a highway. And that's what we celebrate today that God came to us, was born as a baby in a manger, God making a way for us to be with him. As we're about to sing, God and sinners reconciled. That's what we're celebrating this morning.
1, 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. What is your name? I have three names. My first name is Nathan, which you might already know. My last name is Cupforth, which you also might know. But I have a middle name, which you probably don't know, and that's Richard. So that's who I am. That's my name, Nathan Richard Cupforth. Jesus has more than one name as well. We just read about two of Jesus' names in the Bible, and these names tell us about who Jesus is. Jesus is given the name Jesus, which means God saves. This tells us that Jesus is going to rescue his people from their sin. Jesus is also given the name Emmanuel, which means God with us. This tells us that Jesus is God come here to live on earth with us. And so from these two names, we can see who Jesus is. Jesus is God come to earth to be with us, to save us from our sins. That's what we're celebrating at Christmas time. This baby that was born is God come to save us. Jesus has other names as well. If you know any of Jesus' other names, then you can get your parents to send me a text with the name that you know that Jesus is sometimes called and also what that tells us about Jesus. There'll be a prize for anyone who can tell me one of Jesus' other names and what it means. I look forward to hearing from you. Yeah.
Merry Christmas, everybody. For a moment today, I'd like us to just think about Isaiah chapter 40, verses 9 to 11. And I'm going to read them for us now. Go up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift up and fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. Why celebrate Jesus on this day, Christmas? Historians will tell you that Christians sort of adopted and replaced other cultural celebrations, winter festivals with uh, Christmas. Uh, historically, that these festivals that were prevalent through uh, Europe in the early centuries were replaced by Christians celebrating Christmas. So the festival may not have started as a Christian thing anyway. Modern day people will tell you that Christmas is all about family time and presents, having a big meal with family, getting together, uh, enjoying these things, getting new socks, whatever it is. And the question is, why celebrate Jesus on this day? Why not just enjoy everything else or do whatever you want to do? I think in Isaiah 49 to 11, it challenges us to make a really big deal of Jesus, to proclaim the truth about who he is as loudly as we can. See, in verse 9, the people of Jerusalem, the people of Zion, are called to be heralds, to proclaim, to be the bearers of good news. They're called to be evangelists. An evangelist is someone who proclaims good news. And that's what the people of Jerusalem were to be. If you've been with us, you'll know that this chapter is written with exiles in mind. And the exiles were mainly from Jerusalem. And so these exiles were called to evangelize the rest of God's people with this good news. They're told how to do it. Go up on the mountain. That means be visible. Lift your voice with strength. That is, be loud and forceful. Fear not. That is, be bold in your proclamation. They're called to proclaim this message publicly, without shame, without hesitation, with power, with urgency. And at the end of verse 9, we see what their message is. And this tells us why they must be so bold and powerful in their proclamation. Their message is, behold your God. Behold your God. And that's not so much a command as it is uh, an exaltation. It's not saying, look over there and find your God and see him somewhere over there. It's saying, look at your God right here. Here he is. Behold your God. The implication being that they are to proclaim a message of God who has come, who has appeared, who is there, who stands for all to see. A God who is present, who has come to his people that he might display his glory among them. A God who is close rather than far off. Behold, here is your God. He has come. And they're given a message, a two-point declaration. First, verse 10, behold, the Lord comes with might. He's powerful. He's strong. By the strength of his arm alone, he rules and subdues nations. And what's more, he's come to act. That's what the second half of the verse is talking about. He's come to do work. He's come to accomplish things. He has a reward which he's going to get. He's going to do something and the job will be done. 
It's talking about having ability and motivations to make change, to be effective. Second, verse 11. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. Those same arms which are strong enough to subdue kings and nations also carry lambs with tenderness. All that power and might, and yet he leads those with young ones. Gentleness, tenderness. Behold your God, he is mighty and he is strong and he is powerful enough to subdue. And yet he is tender and gentle and kind enough to care for the weakest. That's exactly what we're celebrating today, isn't it? As we think about the incarnation, God becoming man, we're beholding both strength and gentleness. Here is God, creator, sustainer, ruler, lying in a manger, born as a baby, living a life that allows him to sympathize with us, with our weakness, with our flaws. We are celebrating God incarnating himself, coming to us. And as we do that, we're pro uh, proclaiming profound strength and power and might. Strength to destroy death, power to defeat the devil, might to overcome sin. The strength to rise from the grave and rule the nations until they all bow before him. Jesus is powerful and strong. Yeah, we're also proclaiming profound gentleness. The tenderness to carry weak and trembling children, to, to tend and care for his flock, to go to the sick, gentleness to come and lead exiles, failures, defeated people, and love them. Grace to gather sinners back into the fold. Behold Jesus, strong and gentle. Behold the Christ, power and grace. Why celebrate? Jesus at Christmas time. Well, in one sense, Christmas Day shouldn't be any different from any other day. It should be another day where we proclaim Jesus strong and gentle. Yet maybe those early missionaries who transformed pagan festivals into Christmas actually knew what they were doing and actually thought of this because what they essentially did is created a mountain for centuries of Christians to proclaim Jesus from, to loudly, publicly, forcefully tell the world the good news, that God has come and he is powerful and he is gentle. Even today, in a culture that is far from God, we can be the heralds of this good news. We can be evangelists. The gospel of Jesus strong and Jesus gentle can ring out from us in a significant way. Christmas can be a megaphone for us to proclaim to the world, behold your God, see his power and see his grace. That's what we're celebrating today. That's what we're proclaiming at Christmas. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you sent your son. On this day, we remember that he was born in a manger, that he humbled himself and came to us. And yet, as we think about him becoming human, we can't help but remember his death on the cross, how he gave his life for us. And even as we remember his death, we remember his resurrection, that he defeated death and sin and the devil, and he rose to your right hand and even now sits there ruling, waiting to return. 
we behold him, particularly today. See his power. See his gentleness. See his strength. See his grace. And Father, as we behold him and as we celebrate what you have done for us through him, I pray that we would be those who proclaim the good news. We'd be heralds of this great salvation. We'd be evangelists that the world might see your power and your grace through us. We pray this in the name that we celebrate today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.